All right, I was cleaning up and I ran across this. I was about to put it away and I thought, no, I'd make a good video on, uh, on characterizing something. So what is this? Uh, well, it's uh, out of a piece of equipment and it was a modular piece. So this just unclipped. It was, uh, it's not like a sawn off piece of board. This was actually a, a unit and it uh, has a uh, little DC jack on one side and then a connector on the other side. And it's just a, a five volt converter. So, you know, 12, 15 volts in and five volts out. And it's a, uh, a switching regulator, I guess. And uh, it's all on one little board. Uh, so that's pretty cool. So I saved it out of some piece of equipment, figuring I could repurpose it somewhere. And I don't remember what the equipment was. I don't know why I threw it away, because it's uh, uh, Wandel and uh, Gutterman, which is like super high-end German test equipment, really good stuff. Anyway, um, this one says made in the USA. That's interesting. Mm, so maybe it's not German. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I know that they purchased WaveTac uh, back when, anyway. Um, but they're a real dyed in the wool test and measurement company, right? So let's take a look at the uh, design of this thing. Uh, we'll critique the design and uh, figure out what it was they're trying to accomplish and if it's a if it's a smart design or a stupid design. And then we'll actually characterize it and see uh, see how good it is. Now, when I mean characterizing it. I want to know what the efficiency is. I want to know watts in to watts out, right? So it's 15 volts in, let's say, or 12 volts in. We'll do 12 volts. We'll, we'll say 12 volts in and five volts out. How many watts in and how many watts out? That's the efficiency. Now, this particular chip here is rated at uh, three amps maximum. So we'll characterize it up to three amps and uh, see how it does, right? So let's take a look at the design first. Right, so uh, the DC to DC jack comes in here. There's a four amp fuse on the board. It's soldered in, so it's there only in case something drastically goes bad. It'll fire. Um, there's a 0 0.01 capacitor, uh, a uh, ferrite inductor, and then another 0 0.01. So this uh, is kind of a pi network, and it's on both sides. So the DC comes in, and you notice that they don't tie the DC input to the uh, ground plane of the device. Uh, the ground plane is over here, but uh, everything left of here uh, does not have any ground plane associated with it. So this is floating. And what it does is it takes the ground reference from the outside and takes it through an inductor before it gets to the ground plane. So they could do that for two reasons. One is any injected noise gets filtered out and any transmitted noise, uh, RFI, that comes out would be killed by this. So uh, this looks like a nice little design here. Now, the one weird thing is there's two diodes in series, and that doesn't make any sense to me. Um, the only thing I can think of is that they wanted to use one amp fuse, uh, one amp diodes, because they have a whole bunch of them, let's say. And then they did the analysis and they said, hmm, it could actually be a little bit more than one amp, right? So we have um, uh, five volts at three amps. And so that's 15 watts. And so they did a calculation that said, well, what if we had 15 volts out here? Uh, we have one amp. Um, maybe we had more, maybe we had 20 volts out here. Maybe it's more than an amp. Or if it's 12 volts, it's more than an amp, right? So 12 volts, it's a little bit more than an amp. So let's put in two. So I'm not really quite sure about this. If I had to critique this thing, I'd say, just 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 put a bigger one in. These are cheap. Just 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 put a bigger one in. Uh, then there's a uh, 10 um, microfarad tantalum. Uh, it looks like a real high grade tantalum. It's a German tantalum. Uh, they own, they're owned by Vichy about now. We'll, we'll take a look at that. And then uh, and then this this part here, which is in 78 HT305. It's made by Texas Instrument, I believe. And it's its own little self-contained unit. And it's specified at 8 to 28 volts in and 5 volts 3 amps out. Okay, so that's its specification. There's a 100 microfarad tantalum. Uh, no, electrolytic. Uh, so this is tantalum. This is electrolytic. Um, and then a 0 0.01. Uh, so low frequency, high frequency. And then uh, 
there's a diode. I was first confused. Why is there a diode on the output? Um, but is it, it's a protection diode. So let's say that it's for some reason this thing gets shorted out and you got 28 volts running through this thing and suddenly 28 volts shoots into your equipment. And let's say it's a spectrum analyzer, you know, and it's really, really expensive. And so you want to have some protection. If, if, if the power supply goes bad, uh, the anything above 5.6 volts, this will start to crowbar. When that crowbars, this fuse will blow. Okay, so really these two things go together. Um, if there's a crowbar circuit, there's always a fuse somewhere. If this starts to crowbar, bang, the fuse fires and, and the whole instrument is safe. So uh, that's the protection. So ni nice design feature there. So the only thing wrong with this design that seems strange is these, uh, is these two diodes. All right, so let's characterize this thing. All right, we're going to need some test equipment. So let's keep it simple. We'll get a couple DVMs here and a dummy load. We need to load it down. So that's my little dummy load and uh, a couple meters here. So one meter will measure the amps input and one meter will measure the uh, volts input. And then uh, the little load will tell us, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll be able to set, you know, one amp, two amps, three amps, that type of thing, right? So the uh, load is gonna go on the output. So I know this is output. Across that zener is the, is the output. Okay, so we can put it right there. And uh, you may want to characterize it two different ways. You may want to characterize it uh, up at the wall wart or whatever you're going to use this at. But let's say you're manufacturing this thing and you can uh, specify it here at the connector. So if there's any voltage drops and stuff in the cable, you're not worried about that. You're just worried about this unit. So we will put... Uh, Let's see, one of the grounds will go here and we will measure the uh, voltage here right at the input. Okay, so we will put this on DC volts, right? And then my uh, uh, meter here will be connected to uh, the 12 volts coming in. So this is the 12 volts coming in. And uh, which one of these fits? This one. Oh, this one. No, that one fits. Uh, no, that one doesn't fit. Must be this one. One of these fits. No, that one, that one fits. All right. I know one of them out of it. Okay, so we've got 12.12 uh, volts coming in. And um, right now, uh, we're measuring 006. There's no load on the output, right? And, and so now we can apply the load. So we will turn on the load. This little fan noise here. All right. So let's do it at, um, uh, let's say, half an amp, one amp, amp and a half, two amps, two and a half amps, three amps. We'll do those, right? So we'll need uh, our notebook. So let's go ahead and uh, uh, find a piece of paper here and we'll write all this down. All right, I'll go right over here. Oops, put my hand on the fan. <laughs> Okay, so we're going to have a uh, volts in and then current in and we're going to do that at uh, 0 0.5, well, we'll do it at 0, 0 0.51, 1 1.52, 2 2.5, and 3 amp load. Okay. All right. So half an amp. We have, oh, let's go go back. We had 0, we had 12.11 uh, and 0, 0.06. All right, so half an amp. We've got 12.06 and 0.223. One amp. 12.02 and 0.448. Eleven point nine six, 
Got some droop. 0 0.685, 11.91, and 0.935. Eleven point eight five and one point one nine six. So we're above an amp. So if those are one amp diodes. Yeah, we need a little bit more than that. And then three is eleven point seven seven and one point four seven seven amps. All right. So. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, we'll do some math and uh, see if we can plot this. All right, here's our data. Uh, volts in, amps in, volts times amps is watts, so these are the calculations. And then output is amps, amps times 5 volts is watts. And here's our efficiency, which is watts divided by watts. Okay, so 2.5 divided by 2.689 is 92.9% efficiency, right? So it goes from an, about a 93% efficiency, and at 3 amps it goes down to a, an 86.3% efficiency, right? So that's 15 divided by 7.38. Now when I was doing this table, it dawned on me that it's not exactly 5 volts on the output. So to be more exact, we need to measure the voltage on the output. Well, the um, dummy load does that for us. So I actually went back and looked at the video and, and recorded the, uh, the volts numbers off of each uh, setting when we did all of that. And so uh, I came up with this bottom one. And uh, so it went from 4.99 down to 4.95, 4.98, down to 4.82. So it drooped. At 3 volts, it wasn't giving us 5 volts. It was giving us 4.82. So the efficiencies are even worse. So instead of going from 93 to 86, it went from 93 down to 83. Uh, so our worst case is 83% efficiency. So I hope the video was instructive on looking at a design and uh, looking how it was put together. So maybe you're the, the characteristic engineer, you know, uh, a char characterization engineer, and you have to do something like this um, to be able to go through and make these measurements and give some numbers that make a lot of sense, right? So this is the actual watts to watts efficiency of the, uh, of the device, around, around 93 to 83% uh, efficient.